I am the nerdy guardian who fights for virtual love and justice. Boo, my voice cracked. I am Sailor Eli. Uh, welcome back, darlings. I'm joined once more by my wonderful partner, Tuxedo Ken. Hey, that's me. It is you. Yay. Yeah, congrats. I'm All on right. the show. We're still talking to Amanda in Dream Daddy. Unless you've secretly been a robot this entire... A robot who's approximating human feelings this whole time. Oops, didn't click on that. <laughs> oh, my body rejected the sentence. Apparently. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. A haunted monster truck. But seriously, I know you you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you... <laughs> you said duty. <laughs> a few nuggets. Nuggets! That's great! <laughs> yeah, I knew you were gonna... Okay. He is 12. Uh, and fatherly wisdom. And by he, I mean Tuxedo Ken. Like, you're wow. 10 years older than me, and yet you're 12. <laughs> Not all friendships last forever, real friends. So do that. High school sucks. High school does suck. But you know that we, we both know that. I really hate when people are like, well, real friends don't do that. And I'm like, uh, mm, I don't know. You've real friends really can be assholes to each other. Can be, but they don't. I've had some. I've had some people who I was genuine friends with who ditched me like a sack of yesterday's turds, as Lilo said. And nuggets. <laughs> oh my God! Not all friendships last forever. People are going to come in and out of your life. It's just how it works. Not every friendship is going to last forever. So cherish your friends while you have them. And when it's over, don't dwell so much on the bad stuff. You had some good times with MR, but you guys grew apart. Learn from it and keep moving forward. There are so many new friends to make, and they are going to be so much cooler than MR and the rest. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours. Because you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. Stop looking at me that way. No, you're amazing. I... In you are amazing. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> I'm afraid you're going to lick my hand if I cover your mouth. But they won't see it if I do. No, but I'll feel it. Okay. And that's the problem. I'll keep that in mind. Ah. I look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Yes, we did eat. just eat that whole cake. And now we need nachos. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops? Yes? Thank you. You are always welcome. Love you, Amanda. Love you too, Dad. Aw, she said it. She Yay. said it out loud. That was cute. Drinking too much water can cause water intoxication. Oh, we're back to Dad book. All right. Should have two hearts with Damien now. Yeah, yeah. Blood march. Got them hearts. Got them That'd be hearts. funny if you were... Wait, what's your last name? Moon Daddy. I was going to say it'd be funny if you were Blood Moon. Moon March. Or Blood Daddy. <laughs> Blood Daddy. That's, that's your middle name. Eli Blood... Uh, you know what they say about third dates to get pretty serious. Are you sure this is your dream, Daddy? Yes, I am sure. I can't comment. It's never too early to invest in a personal IRA. It's expensive. Ever since we had that picnic table... Pi picnic? I was gonna say picnic table. <laughs> Ever since we had that He had it under his cloak. Yeah, just he in case. fucking pull, whips out a, an entire goddamn picnic <laughs> table. Umbrella and all. Uh, ever since we had that picnic in the graveyard, Damien and I have been spending a lot of time together. We go on nighttime strolls pretty regularly. Yay. He was so impressed with the first letter I wrote him that he insisted we only communicate by post instead of through dad book. I initially protested, but he gave me one of his old signet rings to use as a seal for my letters, and Aww. I just couldn't say no. Hanging out with that goth dad again? Please, Amanda, you know his name. And yes. Oh. Be honest with me here, Pops. Is he actually a vampire? I remember you inviting him into our household that one time, and I've seen the Lost Boys, and I honestly would have preferred trying to see if he could have walked through the threshold of our home under his own power. Yes, Amanda, I have become Damien's familiar. I am compelled under his curse. I'm sorry, sweetie. Turn into a bat. I don't think... 
What's the point of being a vampire if you can't turn into a bat? You're familiar, not a well, vampire. Okay, I'm off. Are you taking the car or are you flying off into the night on the leathery wings of a bat? One of those. I love this kid. <laughs> While I'm out, can you throw away the garlic bread that's in the freezer so I don't die? That would be great. I'm keeping it there as insurance. You understand, right? That's my girl. Weren't they werewolves the other night? What? They were teasing oh, each other yeah, about yeah, being werewolves yeah. and now you're a vampire. Damien and I walk along the water's edge, chatting. Damien's cape, I mean cloak, he hates it when people call it a cape. Damien's cloak flutters behind him in the breeze. I want a cloak. This is gonna seem like a silly question. Buy but... me a cloak. <laughs> Can we have this discussion later? Okay then. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll have we'll have the cloak talk at some point. Yes, <laughs> and not a Klingon cloak because that's different. Is it? Yes. What is a Klingon cloak? It disappears everything. Oh. <laughs> so so you just not exist anymore. Hmm. No. Oh darn. This is going to seem like a silly question, but why do goths wear black? Gothic subculture has always been associated with death, so it would make sense that the style surrounding it would be greatly influenced by mourning. Huh. Interestingly enough, though, that uh, was that in the Victorian era, Queen Victoria herself mourned the death of her late husband for ten whole years, wearing black for the rest of her life. If that's not goth, I don't know what is. Wait, 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 wait. What? It's called the Victorian era because of Queen Victoria? Yes! Really? Oh my god. Wow! Are you serious? I just learned something! Are you for serious? Mate? I had no idea! Are you for serious? Mate? Yes! That's a... That's a mind-blowing! Wow. That is awesome! You are ten years older than me! Twelve. No. Years old. You're... Yeah. Is me. <laughs> 12 years old is me. Victorian era. That's awesome. Oh my goodness. I understand life now. All of it? Well, that part of it. <laughs> I can't take you anywhere. That's why we're just sitting here. I have another question. Go ahead. How are you so comfortable with death? You mentioned in the graveyard that it helps you to appreciate your life or something. Uh, I've experienced several losses over the course of my life, and I truly believe the only manageable way to cope with it is to accept that death is simply a part of living. Huh. It's the single universal truth for every human is, who has ever lived. I am going to die. You are going to die. And life carries on without us. Doesn't that make you feel scared? Not at all. Without the advances of modern medicine, death was everywhere in the Victorian era. And yet, funerals were major social functions. The Victorians were obsessed with mementos of their loved ones, even going so far as to take elaborately staged photographs of their dead relatives. Oh yeah, I've seen those. Those yeah. are pretty oh. interesting. The minutiae, or minutia? I think it's minutia. Of mourning was so complex that there were set periods of grieving that were deemed acceptable based on who in your life had passed. Now we don't have any of that. If you lose someone, you end up feeling lost yourself because we have no modern equivalent of those formalities. We need to allow ourselves time to grieve, to feel that loss fully, but not to allow it but not allow it to consume us. So no, I'm not afraid of death. See, it's cool because he takes a very romantic period and history and, and embraces that for today mm -hmm. um and I, I just i just like that quality about him mm -hmm. now buy me a cape it's a cloak damn buy me a cloak <laughs> that's right no capes <laughs> no capes <laughs> i believe it is a waste to spend your life dreading the end of it the time we have here is brief and fleeting and occasionally cruel but it is all, at all times precious to stare death in the face and live despite that i think is a noble existence. Let's save the morning for the dead. Wow, that's beautiful. I can see the moonlight in the bay glint off Damien's eyes. He smiles. We turn to the harbor and watch ships pass, breathing in the salty sea air. Mmm, salty. <laughs> Filled with the tears of a thousand bro flakes. <laughs> um, oh. Anyway, anyway, um... I look to Damien again, and I can't help but be entranced by his charm, his mystery. 
I find everything about him so fascinating. I lean in closer to Damien, closing my eyes as I do so. I'm so sorry. I have to take this. Damien steps away from me to answer his phone. Oh no, I hope it isn't Lucien again. After speaking in hushed tones for a moment, Damien returns to me. Everything okay? <gasps> There's an emergency. Lucien? Huh. No, thankfully. But I must take my leave. Oh. Oh, uh, okay. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. Huh. Dads do have to stick together, right? Yes. You know it. Huh. Then come. There isn't time to waste. <laughs> then come. I get it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> After a short drive in silence, we arrive at a rundown building on the outskirts of town. Where are we? It's better if I just show you. I push a surprisingly heavy door open oh, no. and find myself in a dimly lit waiting room. A few rickety chairs line the walls, and there doesn't seem to be anyone behind the front desk. There are a few paintings and pictures on the wall, but there's... So nondescript, I'm still unsure of what kind of place this even is. Looks like is. a veterinarian place. Yeah, you can see cat carriers back there. <laughs> wait here, wait here for a moment. I'll be right back. I'll be back. I'll be back. Damien walks off down a corridor, his boot heels echoing through the halls of a seemingly empty building. Distant howls echo, echo from some place I can't see, and there's a faint scratching sound, like claws on tile. I cautiously peek down the hall and find stall after stall of scared-looking dogs. A few of them notice me and skitter up to the chain-link fence, sticking their noses through to sniff at the air. What have I gotten myself into? Suddenly, the lights shut off. I panic. Unsure of where I am or how I can get out, I stumble through the darkness, my breathing getting heavier and heavier. Damien? The lights finally turn back on. Oh. Hey, sailor. What? What is going on? All right, you know what? I'm, we're going to find out in the next one. I'm worried. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. And I hope you join us for the next one. Bye, darlings. Run away. Run away. Ah!